Hello, good morning, dear students. Greetings of the day. So this is the fourth revision of line video in standard six subject social science in chapter number three. Maurya H. Chandramukta and Emperor Masubadi. Okay, dear students. From last three revision video, we have discussed about Chandramukta, about the Emperor Ashoka, how they extended the empire in the some of the part of North India from Brahmaputra to Hindu Kush, from uh, North India to South India. How they expanded, how they defeated. In last living revision video, we have discussed also about the War of Kalinga. The War of Kalinga. How the War of Kalinga changed the heart of. And after this war, he realized what is the reality of the life. He observed lots of bloodshed, millions of people murdered, one thousand around one thousand, and hundreds of people died, captured, cast out during this war in the Odisha. So Emperor Ashoka wanted wanted to conquer. The Kalinga, but this war changed his entire life. And after this war, he never went on to the war. Never went on to the war. Why? Because he wanted to live for the people. He wanted to serve the people. So finally, he realized. Realized he changed his heart, mentality, ideology, and took the part of righteousness, truth, non-violence. And also the teachings, so that we have discussed which are the main teachings of the Asoka. First one was obey your parents, respect the elders, do not kill the animals, spend a little as possible, serve your elders or your guru or teachers, to be kind to people and especially to the needy, to give donation to the Brahmins and monks. Respect and try to understand the principle of other religions. Means tolerance, truth, non-violence, cannibalism. So these are the main teachings of Emperor Ashoka. Now in this present of life class, revision class, we are going to focus, and this is our last revision video of this chapter number six, Roman age, Chandra Gupta and Emperor Ashoka, and which we are going to. Focus revise on these two main topics: Asoka's edicts and inscription, and second topic will be administration of Maurya era. So let's start our revision. So first point: Asoka's edicts and inscription. Asoka, and we know that most of our knowledge about Asoka's reign obtained from the rock edicts and inscription. We get lots. So these are the main sources information: rock edicts and its inscription. Rock edicts and inscription and inscription. Two things that we have to focus. His edicts were inscribed in Prakrit. And not in Sanskrit because Prakrit was the language of the people on those days. So this edict main language was Prakrit. Prakrit language in which he observed, which edicts has engraved. On the different rocks, about 30 kilometers from Gaya, the Ajitya caves have been discovered on the Barbar Hills. So Ashoka constructed many viharas where Buddhist monks could stay. So he constructed many viharas. Third thing, constructed many. Viharas for the monks, Buddhist monks' vision. Okay, next one. 
he also constructed many stupas stupas are domes shaped structure which contain buddha's relics stupas in gujarati it is known as stupas so he also constructed many stupas
is considered as our national emblem of India. Three lions, my dear students. Three lions on every rupee, every note taken easily found. So it then adds made by Ashoka. Okay, and it is adopted as national emblem, the lion capital of Sarnath. <coughs> The Edix also tells us that Pali or Prakrit and other Sanskrit language was the language of the people at that time. Pali and Prakrit language that we have just discussed. Asuka's inscriptions were written in Greek in Afghanistan because the ordinary people there understood Greek well. So it is translated in Greek language. Another Main point. Why it is translated Alex? Why? Because the people of Afghanistan very well understand the Greek language, and that's why for the people of Afghanistan, this Alex, this teaching, this preaching translated into Greek language. Next one. <coughs> Elsewhere, the inscriptions were written in Prakrit or Pali, so in all around India. Prakrit and Pali, two main languages, so the ordinary people of India can understand very easily. And for the other foreign languages, in Afghanistan, it is translated in Greek. Ordinary people for the Afghanistan. The Edis also tells us about Asoka's friendly relation with other countries. So this Edis also gives us information about the friendly relation friendly relation with other related religion and other religion and other kingdom also first point that we have completed now second point Asoka's administration it is very important in the student Administration, military, and judiciary system. 
system. His position was hereditary. Okay, Patliputra and areas around it were under the direct control control of the emperor. At that time, the first capital of Mauryan Empire was Patliputra. So around the and the proper place Patliputra and around that area, it was directly controlled and managed by emperor, the main king of that particular empire. Next one. He managed administration with the help of the minister and higher officer. He took the help of officers, officers and also ministers. In our present government system, we are following such kind of technique, government system that are still prevalent in Gujarat. Especially in our India, we have the ministers, officers that are assisting the different different ministers, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, Ministry for the Fisheries. There are lots of different departments and administration are there. So they have the different duties, responsibility. They have some special kind of work. So, officers, they are appointed by the ministers. Okay, they are well educated, intellectual, very genuine and very authentic. So, the officers always give suggestion, always assisting the minister. And minister directly assisting the main emperor. Chanakya has told about 80 departments. Chanakya, okay. About 18 departments. How many years plus? 18 departments. Chana Kevi. Out of which main department that it is there on your textbook, dear students. Next one. The provisional administration system. Provisional. Second one now. Provisional administration system. What is that? Provisional administration system, dear students. The huge Mughal Empire was divided into five sections. Five sections. Okay. Head of the provision province was province was the governor. Provincial, okay? Provincial. <coughs> Provincial. <coughs> so, head of these different provinces, different provinces are there, okay? So, the head of this province, it is known as governor, dear students. So, governor task in the province was to maintain peace and security. Peace and security. Also, another responsibility is collect revenue to get the orders of the king and obey the keeping the emperor constantly aware of the events taking place in the province. The different provinces were there. The Mauryan Empire. So every province has the different governor appointed by the emperor. Right now, our PM. Let me explain in very few words. Okay. Currently, in modern system we adopted democracy. India has adopted democracy after the independence. Okay. So in the democracy, our PM Narendra Modi and president. Ramnath Kovin, okay, and every state has the different CM, Chief Minister. So every minister of the particular state, Chief Minister, always give report to the PM and as well as to the President of India. So in the same way, every governor of the particular province 
gave proper report to the emperor and all maintain peace and maintain and keep the order that has been given by the emperor in the particular province so it is the duty of governor to keep the order to maintain peace to collect the revenue and as well as to maintain to give security to the particular people of their particular province okay so <coughs> next one is regional administration regional administration what is that so for the sake of administrative case any province was divided into district local and <coughs> local district taluka they are divided into this parts <coughs> district officer is known as raju district officer is known as raju different name that has been given by the chanakya kautilya and that one at the district level by officer of province was called provincial the smallest unit of administration during that time was the village and the head was called gravi at the village level by the students smallest unit it is the smallest smallest unit of regional administration and the head of that village head man or woman is known as gramika gramini or gramika gramika it the head of that person the head of that particular village and it is the smallest unit of the administration unit the emperor ashoka you know that gramini used to run the administration of the village right now sir uh, the duty the responsibility that has been given by the government to the sarpanch what they are doing the sarpanch of that particular village the same duty that prevails during this administration of ashoka of the mauryan age so they elected the main headman the main head woman of that particular village and from that members of that particular village the students so and we know that so this are the main two topics that we have concluded or included in this fourth part of revision and after one you know that regarding the emperor ashoka successors find different information of brahmin jain and in this text so after they ruled there are total nine to 10 kings of mauryan dynasty ruled for one year 37 years whole mauryan empire they ruled how many years to this tells 137 around 10 kings kings mauryan dynasty mauryan empire <coughs> taking advantage of the improvised rule of last king mauryan dynasty okay bhratri hartha this general pushyamitra killed him on the pretext of watching military drill and after he thus in the around 185 185 bc the fall of mauryan dynasty around this a around the year of 185 bc pushyamitra shak established shakuntha dynasty on the throne of magadha and mauryan dynasty came to an end around 185 the shakuntha dynasty established by the pushyamitra shak okay so this and how it was collapsed after 
one of the uh, 37 years of the huge empire. Dear students, that right now I am concluding this. If you have any query, any question, any difficulties regarding to this revision, just call me or message me. So I will try my best to solve your problem as soon as possible. Looking forward to meet you in live classes. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. God bless you all.